Consumers Equilibrium. Today, we are going to understand about Consumers Equilibrium. But even before we get into it, let's first understand what a consumer is. Okay? A consumer is any person okay, who has a desire for goods. So what the consumer wants is he wants to buy goods or maybe even services. Both of them are equally covered. So when I talk about goods, assume the services are covered. Okay. But at the same time, the resources that he has to buy these goods and services are limited. What it means is that the resources may be in the form of money or some kind of an asset. So the resources that he has to buy these goods and services are limited. Okay. So this is basically something which is also known as a consumer's problem or dilemma. Right? The point or, you know, the situation in which a consumer is able to make an optimal allocation of resources so he makes an allocation of resources. So he has various resources, okay? He makes an allocation to good A, good B, good C at different prices, okay? And in such a manner that he is able to best optimize such allocation is known as the consumer's equilibrium. Or it's basically nothing but a point, a situation when the scarce resources Please note that the resources of this consumer are scarce. Okay, scarce means limited. So if he had all the money in the world, he would go out and buy everything and in whatever quantity he wants, right? But the problem is that these resources that he has are limited. So he has to make a choice. When he makes a choice or makes an allocation of the resources, let's say for example, he has thousand bucks that he allocates between three things, 300, 200, and 500, which actually tries to meet out the best of his demands, okay? Then in that case, it's said that the consumer has reached an equilibrium. So, generally speaking, a consumer's equilibrium is a situation in which he's trying to make out, or are actually rather able to make out the best allocation of resources to various needs that he has. There are basically two mechanisms through which or two approach through which a consumer's equilibrium is discovered. The one is the utility approach okay and the second is an indifference curve approach. We are going to see both of them in detail but just to ensure that you know we are covering as a part of this video a basic understanding of this concept let me explain each one of them to you in two or three small words and sentences utility you might be aware but just at the cost of repetition let me explain what the utility means utility is sometimes confused with usefulness while well, that is not the case okay utility refers to the importance or the satisfaction of wants of a consumer that is achieved by a particular commodity right that is the utility approach the other one is the indifference curve approach uh, basically an indifference curve in economics gives combinations of various goods okay so let's say for example you had something like A and B. So you can have 10 and let's say it, this is represented in kgs. So you can have 10 kg of A and 8 kg of B or you can have 9 kg of A and 9 kg of B. If both these commodities are able to give equal satisfaction, so there's a equal satisfaction which a consumer gets. Okay, so it's a combination of various goods and services. So this can be known as combination one this can be referred to as combination two 
that the concept is that an indifference curve basically shows what are the combinations which gives equal satisfaction to the consumer. Okay, we'll discuss all these in details because I'll take specific examples of various kinds of commodities which can achieve the same results. But for now, it's just that you know it's a curve which shows at let's say for example two commodities, A and B. Okay, what is the quantity of A and what is the quantity of B? which falls on this indifference curves, which gives equal satisfaction. So for any point which lies on this curve, indicating different quantity of A and different quantity of B, the satisfaction of the consumer is the same. That's what an indifference curve is, right? So we'll see more of it as we move on. For now, this is the end of this video, okay? We hope you would have liked it. You can subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe link. If you like this video, please hit the like button on the bottom. And you can also share it with your friends who might be interested in this. With this, it is signing off. This is Arun J. Jain, your educator for this video. You can visit us at www.iadbook.com for many more videos on different concepts of economics. Okay, like elasticity of demand, supply, money and banking, and other stuff. Have a happy learning and we wish to see you in many more of our lectures going ahead. Thank you.